Good afternoon and good evening for those who will be watching us later on and uh, hello to those who will be watching us in the future, right? Um, stream from the different channels that the SSB has. Um, it's nice to be here uh, and welcome um, all of you who is um, here with us um, sharing this moment uh, on another Saturday, January 22nd. A little bit cold for us here on the Northeast. Um, hopefully wherever you are, wherever you, whenever you watch this uh, video, uh, it can bring some warmth to you as well as we share another moment, another learning, uh, another experience as well uh, with this uh, Saturday talk, uh, this moment that we share together to enlighten ourselves. As usual, before we pass the word to our speaker of today, um, here at SSB uh, Streaming Live, uh, we'd like to read a passage of the book Happy Life uh, by the Spirit Juana de Angelis through the hands of the medium uh, Devaldo Pereira Franco. And then we will uh, pray together and pass the word to our speaker. Joanna de Angelis on this message says, the greatness of a man can be measured by his capacity for service to his fellow men and for humility and love. Great man stands out and casts a shadow. Wherever great men meet, there is an unquenchable light pointing the liberating way. The true heroes are unknown. They are more concerned with helping than with adver ad advertising their own acts. Become one of them in the silence of your achievements and the greatness of your smallness. Great message for today, and you will see that connects um, hand in hand with the message that we're about to bring to you. But before that, let us just go ahead and calm our minds and our hearts, and you can close your eyes as well, uh, so we can pray and connect with one another, with our mentors, and the mentors of the SSP as well. When we say, Dear Mother, Father, God, we are thankful for this amazing opportunity to connect with one another, to share another message that enlightens us, that encourages us, that brings us together to all other creatures with you connected to it, with you, dear Lord, guiding us to liberate ourselves from the past and to create new connections with a better and more enlightened future. We ask you that you guide us tonight, guide those who will be watching us later in both realms of life, connecting as well with all of those who cannot be here with us right at this moment, physically, spiritually, in any way possible that they cannot be connected yet, hoping that we all receive this enlightenment in one way or the other. Most importantly, we also ask that you guide our brother Daniel Santos, who will connect, who will bring to us the message of this evening, allowing us to learn more or to revisit some of our much needed topics that will guide us into the future. This way, we're thankful for this opportunity and to have one another, and so be it. As we were saying, um, this message earlier that we met, that we read um, uh, from Joanna De Angelis, ties you know, directly with the topic of this evening as Daniel will bring to us family ties, right? And our importance as an individual, whether men or women um, out there, all of us spirits um, on how we ought to do the best of ourselves to be these um, examples of life in the setting of our families, right? So Daniel today will be sharing with us uh, family ties, uh, such an important topic to all of us that allows us to grow, allows us to, to, to learn when we are inserted, when we incarnate in this setting, right? And with no further ado, Daniel, I'm not going to take your, all your teachings here and your time because I know we have a lot to cover. Um, I'll pass the word to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Leo, and good evening, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, good morning. Depends where you are located in this planet. It's always good. Let me put it myself here. Okay. So it's always good to uh, be here at the SSB on Saturdays for this series of talks that we have every every Saturdays. 
And today we're going to reflect a little bit about family. And so the title of our presentation, if I can put it here, Family Ties. Um, why um, is important for us to revisit this topic of family? Well, we know that um, is is uh, one way that we, a human being, come to this physical body is at least through the union of two people, right? So I know that medicine has uh, evolved uh, that probably you don't need a um, second person nowadays to conceive, but um, we are still live in a traditional way that, you know, we need to have at least two people uh, in order to bring a spirit, a, a spirit to be incarnated. And so the union of these, these two people can uh, multiply three, four, and and we we have seen that um, it's very important this setting that we call family in order for us to um, have an opportunity so we can uh, redress any mistake we have done in previous life. So this talk about family tie ties um, is pretty much under the spirit's view. Um, the, the concept of how important it is to uh, um, have a family and to at least make an effort to um, uh, to to, to um, go a, a, to have a good relationship, right? Because um, if our relationship outside in the society is not good, so the root of that uh, relationship can be in our family first, because it's the first a place that we, as a spirit, we uh, discover this new existence. So it's very important for us to work um, in any struggle that we have in family. And, and, and we know that um, it's not easy uh, sometimes um, to, to be in family and to live in family, right? I, I have a friend a long time ago that you should say that um, the best family is that that is in the in the um, picture in the album, right? Because we don't have any problems. So, it's the moment that we live, we are living together with one another, we start to really um, face adversity, face problem, and and we forget that that is the deal. That is why we are we need to be here is to learn how to deal with those that we live with right so but let us go and uh, share some of the insights that we have for this particular um talk that we have here so so the the first thing that i would like to bring is uh the definition of uh, what is a, a family right what is a family um just a moment here let's, let me put it this so by definition, we can, um, we can have different definitions by family, right? So um, we can just go to the traditional definition that family would be a group of individuals living under one roof and usually under one head, the household, right? So that's this uh, traditional definition. Could be also a group of persons people who come from the same ancestors. So that is the um, traditional definition that we'll find in the dictionary. But if we take a different view about what is a family, and um, uh, for example, the materialistic vision, view of family, uh, would, we would define as a group of people linked by blood ties. So in another word, so if we are not born from that um, mother and father, uh, so then we are not considered part of a family, a family, right? This is the materialistic idea. And we should have people in this planet that, um, that has a problem with, you know, if you're not, even if we adoptions, right? Uh, now you need to have your own kids, otherwise it's not, consider a family. And this is like very um, sad, right? A rudimentary line of thought 
that um, we still have um, out there. And but we are not here to judge. So each one with your own uh, line of thought. But under the spiritist view, family. Oops. So family is a blessed institution in which human beings, spirits, right, are reunited, re reunited with the purpose to learn and address mistakes from the past. You may be asked, oh, but we just come here to address mistakes. What about to other things, do other things? Well, yes, mistake is just one of the, um, the responsibility that we come from. Uh, that we come from the spiritual world to the physical one. Uh, we also come here to learn how to love one another, right? That's the main thing. <clears throat> and also to serve. But in order to love one another and to serve, so we also need to make sure that we are um, checking our uh, um, um, actions, right? And if the actions, actions that were not a good actions, definitely we have consequences and then we need to redress those consequences uh, from the materialist point of view um, this only um, will be for one lifetime right but under the spiritist view uh, whatever we do today we will have the consequences of our action either today or in this lifetime or in the next lifetime right so that is uh, uh, what we, we learn under the banner of the Spiritist teaching. Um, so by talk about family, we go a little bit back in time and we uh, revisit how was the ancient family, the ancient family, like the ancient times. Uh, we know that uh, the configuration of was a little bit different that we have nowadays, right? So if we go to the primitive man, we see that um, the, 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 the gathering um, of, of people in the same household under the direction of one man uh, was considered a family. So they incorporate that as the family, part of the family, if it was blood tied or not. So that was very typical from the Roman, the Roman Empire that uh, by definition, um, anyone that lived in that house, you know, either it was from that um, 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 broadly family or not, they may consider it part of the family. And there is um, um, an explanation for that because, you know, in that time, um, so being this part of the family or have a title to be part of that family also would grant it a uh, uh, property, we grant that person um, 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 things. So there is a hidden agenda on, on that, that definition to be part of the same family, right? So, but things evolved. And nowadays, in the modern time, we um, have different configuration of family. We have the traditional configuration that is a man, the husband, wife, and then the children that, you know, were born from that. Um, uh, union or adopted, we have um, nowadays. Oh, you have nowadays family that is just um, is just um, um, uh, kids is just raised by single parent or by grandparent, and also family that is the union of the same sex marriage. We we have seen this number, this type of configuration of family increasing more and more. And um, and one thing that that we we can we learn, um, especially like when we look at the statistics of um, 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 especially here in the U.S. Uh, that that according to the late census figure, and this was 2015, 2016, I believe that we may have a more updated number. 38% uh, of America American kids are being raised outside the traditional two-parent family, either in a single-parent homes or step-families, grandparents uh, ha headed household, foster families, or other family configuration, as we have just uh, mentioned about, you know, the same uh, sex marriage family um, that has increased more and more 
um, in our society. So, so we see that the institution of family exists, but the configuration, how these human beings get together under the same household has been changed uh, with time. Um, and that's important because one of the things, the configuration can change, but we cannot get rid of the family because a, a family would be the first setting that the spirits need in order to be successful in that lifetime or in this lifetime, right? So, and then we ask the question, who are we? Who, who are we? So we are spirits, right? And we have um, repeat this so many times, living in a physical body, right? So right now we are, um, for example, if I put myself here in this part, I'm Daniel, right? But uh, I have a physical body, you know, and I'm Daniel the spirit, have a physical body and also a spiritual body. I become this three dimensional uh, individual, right? But one of the things that we need to keep in mind is that this is not our first experience, okay? We may disagree and that's fine. Um, um, if it is a fact, doesn't matter if we agree or disagree, it's a fact, right? The same thing that we know that there is germ in the air and we, the fact that we don't see it doesn't mean that does not exist. So um, in, in the way um, we, in spiritism, um, bring the idea that this is not our first experience is that it would be impossible to find a rational explanation for all our differences and all um, the difference that we have among one another. And, and this difference can be applied to different levels, right? Intellectual, um, regards to our uh, so 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 social status, to our education level. So if we have to take all this in consideration, we could not accept, if this was not uh, just one lifetime, we could not accept the existence of a God that would be just and and loving, right? So uh, in that conception, we need to accept that everybody needs to be equal. But the fact that we are not equal, we need to take in consideration that we must have a mechanism that make us you know, go into a different levels. And we must accept that um, this is not our first experiences in this uh, lifetime, right? So we learn in spiritism also about the uh, evolution of the spiritual principle. So we uh, not only see the human kingdom, but also we see all the kingdoms, like the mineral kingdom, the vegetable kingdom, the animal kingdom. So, and we see that this spiritual principle needs to go to different internship uh, until become a human, a human beings. So in all these different kingdom, so we see that there is a, um, a, a group of, of beings that get together, uh, bring this idea of the first rudimentary family. When we look at the animal uh, uh, kingdom, the vegetable kingdom, they have group of you know, um, families that is, is starts to develop. It's not yet in the configuration that we have in the human um, in the in the in the human in the humanity in human uh, the human kingdom, right? But so the siege and this config the rudimentary um, um, necessity to be together in order to uh, uh, protect themselves, um, and also by the instinct that you know the spiritual principle will uh, acquiring as they move up in this scale of evolution. So we see that uh, in the book Evolution Two Worlds by the spirits uh, André Luiz, psychographed by Chico Xavier, we learned that in order for us to be and to have this body, the physical body that we have, it took 1.5 billion years in the evolutionary process. So all during this time, um, the spiritual principle wa was acquiring experience and to become individualized and became become uh, a spirit in the uh, in the level that we are now. So now we need to develop our reason 
we need to develop our emotions. So in that way, we need to come, you know, to the physical uh, life many, many times and make choice, decision, and those choice that we are making will help to shape us uh, our evolution. One day we will become probably a pure, a perfect spirit, a pure spirit as we learn in spiritism. So we may ask the question, where do we live? So where do we live? So do we live here in the physical body or we are there and here? So what is our true house? So basically right now we have pretty much two homes, right? We have the true one that is our spiritual realm or the spiritual plane and the physical realm that is this environment that we live now with all the senses that we have that we call our temporary home. So we need to keep this in perspective that um, we are here, but this time is temporary, right? And so we put, so if we look at, we put it like, you know, a big cycle, circle over there and a small one to, to be representative that, you know, our true home is not the physical one. Although once we are incarnated, we need to really devote ourselves to do the best that we can in this, in this, temporary home that we are but you we know that during our sleep time we go back to the spiritual one right so when we have like intersection point here um, that we can see that probably this is the moment that we are incarnate but also we as a spirit we can also visit or be in contact with those that are in the other side so why do we need to live in family? Why do we need family? So that would be another question. Um, so, <clears throat> well, as I mentioned the beginning about family, it's in, it's in order for us to have a family, first we need to have, you know, um, um, the union of a, two people, right? To build a family. And if we look at back, for example, if we do, if we if we need two people for to build a family, um, and here in spiritism we don't say that we don't take part in okay, it needs to be a man, the woman. So it's two spirit, okay? So we we're gonna not gonna be talking about gender. It's two spirit to get together and to be responsible for a third one or more than one, right? So uh, we have different type of unions. Um, but what we have observed is that um, this union or that has generated family has been challenged by us, right? Because then we come in this family here now, and then sometimes we feel that um, we are born in the wrong family, right? We hear this a lot, especially when we reach that teenage um, phase of our life. Um, because now we are conf in constant conflict with those that were responsible for our life um, in the physical body. And in this um, book that is not in English, uh, Estudando a Mediunidade, like Study Mediumship by uh, Martin Peralva, he lined up types of unions. Um, and why is it's good for us to see what type of union we have been facing this planet. And then we can understand uh, why we have conflict in the family setting. So let's go and revisit some of those unions. For example, there is a union that he called sympathetic unions, right? And basically are those formed by friendly partners that is real, that is real affection among them. So uh, uncommon on earth. So they are already saying that this type of union then is not the majority, right? We have few percentage of union that's called sympathetic union. So basically there, there is a real affection among them. So, so this is one of 
them. So we are not here to label your family. So we just bring the pact here. So and then you see which kind of which type of union you, if you are, you know, um, household, um, if you are, you know, in the in the way to be, you know, to form a family. So we need to pay attention on this. The second one, uh, type of union, trial or expiation or atorn atonement. So this is among um, spirits that are mutually committed soul who comes together to make amendment against serious error perpetrated in the past, also to develop the value of patient, tolerance, and resignation. They are most common. So we, we find more in this level that we are living the planet Earth, this type of union, union that is um, based on trial and expiation or atonement. So, uh, so those souls, they agree to come together and to work and develop, you know, some values, as we, we have read here, values of patient tolerance and resignation. There is a third type of union, sacrificial, are characterized by a large evolutionary difference between the spouse. So this is, a, this is also another type of union. So um, there is a union that will form family that the souls of the people involved in that, they are completely different aspect of you know the spectrum right it's like one is like day the other one is night one is is right the other one is left right so it's the opposite way <clears throat> so that that would demand a lot of work on this kind of relationship right so the fourth that he uh, categorized is accidental not pre-programmed so what is this, Daniel? And this is the type of union that the marriage that they were not programmed into the spiritual world. So, so this is telling us that majority of our, our, our uh, union in this physical life has some kind of like planning before, right? But since we have free will, you know, we may have those kind of relationship that it was not even, you know, planning in the spiritual world. So they meet only by physical affection without root in sincere affection. So there is a lot of hidden agenda in this in those um, type of union that's pretty much based on physical affection. So from the moment that one of the partner, the physicality change or you know um, the social status change so that not is not going to last that union right so there is no sincere affection right there is more like selfishness act self selfish approach in that those kind of relationship and the fifth one is called transcendental union so those transcendental union is union between noble souls which together will devote themselves to work, to work works of great value to humanity. That is very um, also is not so much common, right? It's very few. We pe probably can identify um, few of those kind of transcendental relationship in humanity. But definitely, why we are bring this so we can understand that the challenges that we have in family, um, and especially in the level that we live in this planet, a majority of them is in this, based on the second, um, the second bullet over there, the second classification, are based on trial and expiation. So we come, we get together with one another in order to uh, learn or to develop values that will help us in our evolution. So I would like to point out this so we can have an idea about, you know, the institution of family that may seem like, oh, family is a beautiful thing, but we require a lot of work 
because the level that we are, the type of union that we are having is not a sympathetic or transcendental type of union. Either they are sacrificial or they are based on trial and expiation or um, 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 accidental, right? So as, since we mentioned about this planning, we have a reincarnation planning, although some people may not believe in that, but everything is organized in the universe, right? Everything is planning. Uh, nothing happens by chance, right? It, either if this planet um, is a con conscious, the conscious level, not, but there is a plan, there is, there is a reason for things to happen. Things happen sometimes because um, our reason may make the wrong choice, right? Um, and we may not remember, but um, we, we don't know when we face things that um, was a consequence of um, miss a mistake that we have done, we may, you know, request to have another chance, right? Let's just forget about the spiritual plane. Let's just think about here and now, you know, what happened when sometime in our relationship with friends, we made a mistake. Sometimes we say something that, you know, is going to hurt the other person. Or we say something to a family member that we really bring some kind of uneasy situation. So we ask for a second chance, right? We ask for, you know, sometimes we ask, okay, forgive me or give me another chance to reestablish this relationship. Um, I was not, you know, was not a happy moment that the person said that to you or vice versa. But so we need to we need to take this in consideration, and um, and amplify this to you know many lifetimes, because this is just a small um, example that happens to us here in this lifetime. So now let's imagine that we have a situation that we didn't have time to ask for a second. Uh, a second chance, a second opportunity. So what happened? Even because we died or the other person died or you move away and then you never had a chance to meet that person. Uh, and that person was inside of your family, was either a brother or is a parent or, you know, a cousin, someone that is you grow up with. You made a tremendous mistake because you are young, you didn't know better. So now you, you have that feeling, that emotion that is recorded in your soul. Now you don't have a chance to, um, uh, to make amendment with that person. So you go to the other side. So what do you think is going to happen? If you have the chance to be and to meet that person, or your guardian angel comes to you and say, "Hey, um, you cannot move much because you need to, you know, make amendment with that person. You need to reconsider what you have done. You need to, you know, uh, go back and fix it. So what are you gonna do? Of course, you're gonna ask for a second chance. That's why we are here." We are in this family because we ask for a second chance. We ask for a second opportunity to redress previous mistake. Either if we are the perpetrator or if we are the victim, at some way there is a, um, uh, um, there is a, a, a feeling that needs to be worked out, right? And that's why we are here. And that's why there is a, um, planning before we come here. We are not here by chance. We are not here by chance. So there is a case, and let me see our time here. We should like have 20, 30 minutes. Uh, there is a case in this book, Action and Reaction. And I just bring, would like to bring this case to illustrate, you know, how sometime we miss the boat, how sometime uh, being a family require a lot of work. And, and, and sometime we may lose the opportunity to 
redeem or to make things right. In this case, in chapter 14 of the book, Action and Hero Action, is called Interrupted Redemption. So uh, this is a long case. I'm just going to summarize uh, briefly about this case. And this case is about uh, Ideo or Lideo and Marcella. So this husband and wife that um, uh, made a commitment, they came, they came from a spiritual colony called Mansão Pais, and, and they agreed to reincarnate as husband and wife because the previous reincarnation, they couldn't have a good relationship. So Marcela agreed to reincarnate again as Lideu wife. So once they reincarnate, they had three children. They have the boy called Roberto and two girls, one Sonia and the other Marcia. So, but then after the family was, um, the family was already uh, sad. So Lideo starts to really like not wanting to move on with the family <laughs> anymore. And then he starts to have a relationship, outside relationship, an affair with another woman called Mara. And this another person that he was having an affair was a really like also put a lot of um, a negative thought in his mind and also send uh, um, uh, not so nice message to Marcelo. So in a point that Lideu didn't want to move on with the family. So, but there is one thing in this family that um, uh, was very, uh, called the attention of the mental sealers and Andrea Luis and Ilario that was observing the case. So this case was a request by um, other um, spirit to go and to help them because they are, this family was, they were going to a, a very tough situation because now Elidio wanted to separate, but he didn't want to leave because he was so uh, in love with the two girls, but he didn't like at all the wife anymore and the son. He has a, a, a huge repulsion, he huge aversion to the son Roberto. So the spirit was observing that family and the setting. So until one day, Lideu, Lideu decided to have a, after too many influence or the obsession that he was going through uh, uh, and the push away from Mara to separate. But he knew that if he separate, he would not gonna have the chance to stay with the two girls. And that was the thing that was keeping him coming home. But every time he was at home, um, it was not nice. Um, he was very rude with her and uh, mistreating the boy a lot. And, and that situation would not last for long. So one day he has this idea that who you gonna get rid of the wife? He's gonna kill the wife. Literally, that was his plan. So now the mentor, Silas, Andrea Luis, and um, uh, Ilario, so became very worried about. But because this couple, especially Marcella, has some credit she, since she was from the Manson Pass, so they decide to help. And in a way to help is to keep the, their eyes in that family. So they put two spirit as kind of like a security in their house because she was very devoted to uh, her duties. She was a good mother and she, um, she was very also devoted to her prayers. So that's why her prayer was also helping to try to keep the environment in a good, in a good way. But then he decided that one day he's going to kill her. So he planned everything. And so Andrea Luis, Silas, and um, Ilari was called one night to the house because that night, so the murder will, will ha should happen because he was already with all the uh, planning uh, ready to kill her, uh, to get, get rid of her. So basically what happened was very interesting because once Sila arrived in the house, he saw that he was coming to the bedroom. 
But before he goes to the bedroom, he needs to make sure that the kids who are still sleeping is not going to see the murder happen. So in that moment, so Sila has a beautiful idea. And Sila went to the little girl, Marcia, that is the one that he loved the most. And because she was sleeping, so she was able in the spiritual form uh, to see Sila's and Sila kind of like project the image of the father going and killing her mother. So that was very traumatic for the little girl. So the little girl wake up when she saw that scene, she woke, woke up screaming, say, saying, uh, father, um, please don't kill, don't kill, don't kill. So by saying this, she woke up the other the, the other sister and the boys and was a tremendous commotion. So now Mara that was sleeping also woke up and ran to the bedroom. So when she arrived in the bedroom, he was with his gun. So the immediate idea that you know the the little girl as well, the mother had was that he wanted to kill himself. But that's that was not the idea. The idea is that he was planning to kill his wife. But because the spiritual intervention, in a sense, to show a, 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 the scenario for the little girl that was asleep in the form of dream, so not dream, but nightmare in this case, uh, the girl wake up screaming and the whole plane was interrupted in that moment. So then the wife was very uh, distressed and told him that, please don't kill yourself. So Ilideo also, start to say that he couldn't move on with that family anymore, that he wanted to leave. And uh, so Marcella said, well, so you are free to go, um, but please don't kill yourself, you know? And that was kind of like work out because that's what he wanted to do. You know, he wanted to leave the family, but he also wanted to have some chance to not lose the girls. So to finalize, uh, Andrea Luis and Larry was very distressed with this situation. Why someone wanted to kill their partner, especially because there is three children involved? And what happened to this couple? What happened with, with those children in past life? So then, then uh, the, the instructor, Sila, explain what happened in the past life. So in the past life, basically, Ideo uh, was this playboy, young man, that um, uh, decided to go away and um, date young girls. And one of these young girls that he dated in the previous life was Marcia, that is his daughter in the current life. And also, he date both like Sonia and Marcia were their sister in previous life, but he didn't have any commitment with her, with them. So um, he ended up like pushing her to prostitution like Sonia and Marcia in the previous life. But eventually he got married with someone that was Marcella in that life because Marcella was getting old and she really wanted someone to, to as a partner and Elideo Take, took the advantage and married her. But here was what happened. After there was that relationship in the period of life was the kind of like accidental relationship because he, after a couple of years married with Marcella, he, he, he didn't want more to have, um, you know, commitment with her. So he left, you know, he left the house and times goes by and Marcella decided in that previous life to remarry. And she, 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 she remarried with another man. Who was that man? So that man in the previous lifetime, now in this current lifetime, came as her son. That was Roberto. But what happened, and that was the big question, why he has so much aversion toward Roberto in the current life? Well, because in the previous life, after Elineo left the marriage, so when Marcella remarried another guy, another man that was Roberto. So after many years, Elineo got sick, and then he tried to come back to his wife because he was old now, 
when he arrived in the city, he got to know that he was living with a, uh, uh, another person. He got so upset that he went there and killed, you know, the second husband, Marcella, that now in this current uh, lifetime was born as Roberto. Took many years in the other side. Then he got together in the Mansão Paz and they have this reincarnation plan. So Marcella doesn't need to come back in this new lifetime, this current life, as her husband. But, but as his her, uh, as her, yeah, yeah, his his wife, right? So, so, but she agreed that she would come back in the new lifetime and as his wife, and she agreed to accept, you know, Sonia and Mas as the daughters and Roberto as the son. So, the end of this. Um, chapter pretty much is telling you know, the mentor give a nice explanation about how responsible we need to be otherwise we are postponing we are interrupting our redemption right so and there is a beautiful quote that the mentor um Sila said when he says however you both know this is to Hilario and Andrea Luis so Sila is saying, however, you both know that redemption through reincarnation is also exactly recapitulation. So, and we highlight exactly recapitulation to say that whatever is happening nowadays in our current life is not too much different to what was happening before. And now we are having the chance to make things right, right? So they are saying like through so redemption through reincarnation is also exactly recapitulation. If we do not work for our intense and radical, radical renovation for the good, through, edu through edifying studies that educate our mind and the love for our neighborhood that perfects our sentiments, we will be tempted today by the same weakness as yesterday, since we have done nothing to suppress them. Hence, we rekindle the same wrongs. So, um, we out there, you out there that are listening, we may not be fitting in this situation, right? But this is to bring just like one, uh, I would say, strong example of, you know, some disinterrupted redemptions. We may not uh, be in the same situation that Ideo and Marcella, uh, they were in this uh, case, but sometimes our redemption, we interrupt our redemption, it's not, really, it's not only um, related to, um, to husband and wife, but sometimes relationship between brothers and sisters and sisters and between siblings and, and someone in your family, right? So that we are make we are, uh, losing that opportunity to make to to make the you know the redemption that we have agreed before uh, reincarnation. So we wanted to bring this example to you because um, I know it's it's kind of strong example, but um, we should we we wanted to make a mark here that um, we need really to revisit you know which kind of relationship we are having in our family. So we almost approach for the end of our talk. Um, so when we talk about family reincarnations, <clears throat> since we are mentioned uh, the case of um, Lideo and Marcella, so we learned that in the spirit world, the spirit form groups of family united by affection, right? Sympathy and similar inclination. These spirits have these spirits have at being together, seek out one another. So we have um, the other side, you know, um, our family in the other side that is basically in affection and sympathy, right? So family ties are, are not destroyed by reincarnation. A certain person believes, on the contrary, they are strengthened and become tighter. 
title. Why? Because as we reincarnate, we are having opportunities to redress, redress. And may, we may have situation that, that the situation that we learned before about interrupted redemption, but in the great scale, we have more the strengthening of relationship because we are having opportunity to fix the, the problem. So this is in the gospel chapter 4, 8, 18. So in this book, SOS Family, it's not in, in, in English yet. So um, Joanna Jange says, says that when the laws of reincarnation are known, understood and applied, they can explain the most obscure enigma that the educator confronts in his educative process. So it's very important for us that we should ask questions, even if we don't believe in reincarnation, but then they must have some kind of mechanism that if we are in this family, if we are going to this situation, there is a lesson to be learned, right? And we have like a scientific study that um, uh, Professor, the great scientist, Jan Stevenson has published a lot of books about, you know, children that comes and remember previous life, uh, just kind of like um, um, reinforcing uh, the idea that we have many lives, right? So regard to society and family. So society is a, 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 a group of families together, right? So when we talk about society, we talk about this group of people form the family that form society. So um, we learn, especially is a question in, in the Spirit's book, 774, uh, where Kardec, where the Spirit said that social ties are necessary for progress and family ties are summed up in social ties. So family ties are a natural law. God has thus willed that human learn to love one another as brothers and sisters. And we can highlight here that it's very important for us to really um, 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 take this um, moment that we are living family series, right? Because this is gonna strengthen our relationship with those that first we love and those that we are still learning how to love, right? Sorry about that, this was my... Um, so, and also one day we can relate to one another as brothers and sisters, despite of the brotherly tie that we have mentioned before, right? So, and this is based on charity, right? So to make an effort to understand uh, the members of our family require, an, you know, loving action. And this loving action would be a charity. Without charity, there is no salvation. We learn this um, in the Spirit's book, um, in the Gospel according to Spiritism. But also in the Spirit's book, question 775, Kardec has the question about family. And he, he asked, what would be the result of society if family ties were relaxing, or if there is no family setting, right? If for some day, you know, people decide, oh, you know, I'm not going to live in family, I'm going to do whatever I want. So, and the answer is, is very strong, right? A magnif magnification of selfishness. And that's true, right? So, uh, Family require um, um, uh, a lot of work to take care of one another. Is is basically loving action all the time. So if we don't do this for others, we are being selfish, right? Selfish. Do our family ties extend beyond our present lives? Okay, so I have this family setting here. So what happened after we die? So if you lost your parent, if you lost, you know your brother or sisters. So what happened? So this connection is still continue after, you know? So, and, and Kardec says in question 204, um, they must, you know? Uh, in fact, they experience the answer. So they must. What? This family tie must continue. The succession of incarnation established relationship among spirit 
that dates from previous lives. These relationships are often the base for the instant likes and dislikes you develop for people that you have similarly met for the first time. Yeah, it's the same thing. Sometimes we met a new person in your family work and then you you don't go so you you don't like that person at, at the first time, right? So when you look at you have that initial aversion, you know. So and the same thing happened in family, right? Um there is there is situation that you know some parents they like more one of their children than the other or they have aversion uh, among families member um and that uh, for sure um would be you know a result from previous reincarnation so to finalize we have our spiritual family is those that we have true affection and sympathy you know and we have our corporeal family that is those that's based on uh, blood tied you know so that's um we need to this is the two types of family that we have right spiritual and corporeal remedy for guilt and resentment so we decide to bring this it's just because we may um have people and even ourselves may has experienced this in in situation that um uh, the relationship gets spoiled and here is the suggestion um for work on that guilt or resentment it's benevolence toward everyone forgiveness of for offense for offenses indulgence to others imperfection and this is based on this question of the spirit's book 886 when kardec asked what is the true meaning of the word charity as jesus understood it Benevolence towards everyone, indulgence for the imperfection of others, and forgiveness for offenses. Daniel, that is very easy to say, right? Yeah, nobody said that would be easy to put in practice. It's easy to say, but it's not a guarantee that's going to be used to put in practice. But here is the remedy, right, that we can suggest. Also, prayers, you know, prayer is an act of worship, praying to God is thinking of God, drawing near to God, putting oneself in communication with God. Through prayer, we may through prayer we may do three things. What? Praise, ask, and thanks. Every time we pray, we can do these three things. We can praise God, the Creator. We can ask. You can give thanks, right? Um, because our life in this physical body is not only um, suffering. We have moments to be you know thankful right we also can take advantage of our sleep time so we can really um, ask you know our spirits guide or guard angel to help you know in some kind of like uh, relationship that needs to be fixed so we we can do all sorts of therapy during the sleep, as we mentioned over there. In particular, we may use our time in the spirit realm to reconcile with our enemies. While in this state, the spirit reveals its true identity, making it impossible to conceal its feeling. All we need is a strong will and ask for our spirit's mentor's guidance. So, yeah, I mean, sometimes if we are not able to even, like, think about uh, that person that has hurt us, we may send our thoughts to their guard angel, she or he guard angel, and say, hey, you know, help us during the sleep time to reconcile, or to, I don't know, to at least have a conversation. And that's, that's what we also suggest. Also, the guard at home. We always need to keep in mind that praying family will create the shield of protection of protection in our house. And also we learn in spirits that the God at home, or gospel home, if you are not Christian, but that's why we adopted the word God, because then we can, if you are from another philosophy, another religion, we can take that time in family to do something uplifting, right? Um, and we learn in spiritism that this act that we uh, do in family 
also not help only our family, but also can help our neighborhood, right? So um, there is a lot of account about these um, practices in spiritism. And that's it. I'll stop here. I'll bring Leo. And we're going to go to see if we have questions. Right, Leo? Daniel, first of all, thank you for bringing this amazing topic. Uh, like you said, um, it, it, it takes a lot of work, right, for us to go ahead and uh, live in this setting, um, the family setting, right? Much needed, uh, but it's a lot of work. And, and reincarnation, if anything, is for us to work, for us to develop, for us to get stronger. Uh, so it's, it's important that you bring this at the beginning of the year so we can also <laughs> include the, the idea of adding uh, family members, family um, relationships to our resolutions, right? To our new year resolutions that we need to uh, embrace um, and and definitely develop. Um, yes, as as I was saying as well, uh, there's a lot of um, uh, questions because you know with that we know that the topic is really um, important and dearly to all of us here. Um, uh, I would like just to um, acknowledge some of the hellos that we have received over here. Uh, you know, obviously, Kissing Fallen Us, Alba as well, uh, and many others who actually have uh, submitted their questions too. And uh, for us to get to the uh, the good part of all of this, um, I will also um, will also jump into the questions. Right. Um, I'll start with um, Yasko when she asks: Sacrificial union seems more common. Isn't the one that caused the sacrifice of the partner acquire more debt? Yeah, I, I, I mean, like, uh, I would say that sacrificial and also the um, expiation, right? I think is the two main one. I don't know if sacrificial is more common, as you also mentioned, but definitely is there <laughs> among, you know, many, um, many of the cases that we see. Um, in our society. Um, so especially here in the US that the rate of divorce is like 50%, right? So for every uh, two couples that get married today, so a couple of years later, um, at least one will uh, divorce because, you know, several reasons. Um, so yeah, you ask, I think, I think uh, I agree, um, agree of, you know, that this type of unit, the sacrificial one, always require more from the one that's a little bit ahead, you know, giving a chance to push that other partner, you know, to, um, to at least try to, to move on. Eh? But uh, when you say that, isn't the one that caused the sacrifice of the partner acquire more debts? I don't know about that. You know, I don't know. I, Leo, you can you can you can um, bring your insight on that. What do you think, Leo? You're mute. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Daniel. Anyway, I, I I think that you know based on what we study, it's a any relationship, right? It's a mutual growth, right? There's no uh, there's no debt per se. Um, I think that that when we insert the the another word here that would counterbalance with that, you know, love uh, would uh, kind of like you know push that idea of that away, right? Um, and who is to say that we didn't create uh, a dependency on that individual that now needs the sacrifice, right? Mm -hmm. So if we all we also have the the, the the beautiful uh, other beautiful uh, you know works from Andrea Luis that shows us that perhaps the one in need today was the one who was debilitated in the past by us and now that we have acquired you know some understanding in in life in general we come back to help that individual that seems to us that that individual who is in need of a sacrifice yes it mm -hmm. is a sacrifice but that individual is is um, incapacitated let's say you know uh because of us you know in the past so there's a lot that we need to add yeah. there uh in order for us to make an uh, you know uh 
uh, or to construct an idea behind a situation. Because again, every situation is peculiar. So, but that's a good question, Daniel, because yeah. it ties directly to what she's saying right here in the next question. You know, with all of this, why agree to a, to sacrificial union? Yeah, and I think I think the, the based on this question, it's related to uh, you know um, the situation that we mentioned about. You know, sometimes we realize that we made the mistake, right? And that realization requires to ask for a second uh, opportunity. And and if this is happen here in our current life, why not extend this to previous life, right? And that is a situation that we didn't have the opportunity to uh, address. Then we volunteer. We say, okay, I can do whatever is possible to come back and, you know, and and help you know um, that soul to to be back to track, and there is one thing also that we need to take in consideration that sometimes our mistake will really mess up the other person. Um, is is like for example you are driving the highway right, um, and and then you made a mistake driving, so you're gonna cause an accident that not only gonna affect one car but also is gonna affect multiple cars. Right, and sometimes even car that was coming in the other direction depends of the highway you are driving through. So now you are not responsible for that car that you reached the first, but now you are responsible for the second car that reached the third car and fourth because you are the cause of that accident, right? And we see this a lot, especially like in that book, Sex and Destiny, when we see that one act of a person um, trigger. Uh, and mess not messed up, but disrail several other people's life. And now that person needs to, you know, put all those soul together in two families because the 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 damage was so great that they could not put in one family. They need to put in two separate families and 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 work in a way that, that two families can get along. So uh, that person can really can have a peace of mind and move on in their life, in his life, right? So I think uh, that's why we agree to come in this sacrificial setting, right? Right. right. It, it's interesting that you bring this 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 um, example, Daniel. And I was thinking about the same thing because you know we see if, if you know we don't want to bring and spoil for those who haven't read yet Sex and De Sex and Destiny, but it's interesting how we analyze that this mutual uh, growth, right? the spirit who realizes that he made a mistake in the past and derailed the life of others, right? He comes out of love, you know, and there's this, this compassion, you know, towards these individuals nowadays uh, that it's like, it, it's beyond uh, even Andrea Luis's, ex, you know, understanding. And mm -hmm. he's always there, very nice, very kind to these spirits. And then we learn that there was a connection in the past, you know, to say the least. Um, but, you know, the base of out of this, at least what I get from the book is the love is the, you know, it, there's got to be, you know, that that line of thought that he, I'm, we're here to help. And again, not thinking in an egotistical way, but in order for him to develop himself as well, the spirit that is now in the sacrificial position, mm -hmm. he needs to go through that. He needs to help those individuals. It's more like if I go to your house and we like to play about this, right, or joke about this. <laughs> If I eat something and I live, you know, leave, you know, a bunch of dishes at the kitchen, guess what? At one point, I'm going to have to wash those dishes, <laughs> you know, to make a mess. Guess what? Yeah. We're going to have to fix it. So I think it's a beautiful um, example that you bring. <laughs> yeah, I was just say, especially when um, my daughter has some of her friends here to sleep over in the house. And I used to come into the living room and say, hey, this is the universal law. And everybody was like, universal law? What is the universal law? It's, it's three things. If you, get, if, you, if you get something dirty, you need to clean. If you break, you need to fix. If you move from one place, you need to put it back. So that's the universal law. It's, it's good here in the planet Earth. It's good in Jupiter. In any place in this universe, that's the universal law. <laughs> so <laughs> for I, sure in our houses, right? <laughs> yes. In our house also, we implement the universal law. But Leo, right. since we are talking about the sacrificial union, I just wanted to put this one from Paula because she is just a follow-up of Yasko's question. I know that I'm just bypassing the other people's question. It's just because it's the same topic here. Uh, couldn't sacrificial union be motivated by 
altruism. Yes, because uh, is is altruism and also is because could be motivated for a deep guilt for the soul from pre previous lifetime. So is an opportunity that the other soul also wanted to redress and is in bed in their um, in their unconscious mind, right? That the the person either doesn't have that notion that why they need to bear those kind of relationship. Um, but also can be like that the spirit is already ahead of the game and because they already developed altruism, now they wanted to go back and really agree to rescue that soul. And um, that that's also could be a possibility. Yes, Paula, thank you for that. Okay, so let's go back to the top. <laughs> You're mute. Right. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, then Abby comes with uh, this question here, and I'm not so sure, um, you know, that is directly related to this the top of topic of families. If not, we can generalize as well. But she asks, what does spiritism say when someone is down on their knees praying for help and their guardian angels do not answer? Thank you for this interesting talk. Interesting talk, Daniel. Well, I think that um, our perception is that the guardian does not answer, but um, it's very hard for us to say it's not answered. This is the same way you say that God does not answer, right? Because if a God angel was someone that was assigned to take care of us and represent, you know, the will of the Creator, um, so maybe the way we're perceive, perceiving that um, situations that um, probably is not having an effect, but um, maybe we should take a different look of the situation. Of course, each case is, is, has their own. We cannot like, um, we cannot come here and say, look, if you pray, you have a positive answer. Because then that's not the way the divine laws work, right? If it was, everybody had no problem, right? Because there is a bunch of people praying over there and they seem that they are not uh, be answered. But here there is one thing that I would like to share that uh, happened to Divaldo Franco. And uh, Joana Girange was the one that told him about that. It, is that, you know, sometimes we pray for things that not get more serious, not happen, for things that didn't happen, right? So, so okay, we, maybe we are praying to remove, to, to, uh, for us to solve a particular problem. And we think that that prayer was not answered because uh, the problem was not solved. But here is the other side of the situation. Let's pretend that you pray for the problem to be solved. What would be the consequence now we, you are solve that problem we're gonna be in the next scenario? What is the guarantee that we're not gonna be facing a huge other problem? So. I'm going to tell an example here, and this is in the book, one of the book that I don't remember now. I think it's in, I don't know if in the domain of mediumship, um, is one who, the mission of the light. So was the case of this mother. The mother wanted the son. The son has a disease that seems incurable, right? And she used to pray every night to God to, you know, has the son get better you know and so so one day the because she was so fervent so the spirit doctor granted the son to be healed to be cured of that disease so and then at the first point wow that's great right but then what happened later so that son that now became healed he starts to do things that will really not, not, was not in the incarnatory plan. And the, the, the situation is that the life that is supposed to be better now became a nightmare for the mother because the son now became involved with things that he should not have done. And the reason that he's doing now is because now he has a perfect body that he can go and do stuff. Now the mother is suffering, asking, pray for the son to get sick again, right? So sometimes we think that praying to solve a problem 
will make our life completely, you know, great. And we don't know that that situation is a break for us not to get in a more serious situation later. So I know that's very hard to say this, especially if we are facing a problem now. But one thing that we learn is that let us trust. Let us do the best. Let's continue to pray. And let us put this in God's hand. We can ask, you know, because what we want, but there is no guarantee that what we want is what is ne is um, what it is um, um, really helped us in our in our evolutionary process. But thank you for the question, Abby. Yeah, and and also then what I would like to add, and I know I think you said it very well. Sometimes you know. You know, it's hard for us to say or mention anything. You know, our hearts go, goes to you, Abby, and to whoever is going through this right now. Um, that you know, it, it's it's you know, we we're not being heard, right? We are being heard, and sometimes the situation itself is to make us better, right? Um, but you know, the best for you and 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 to all of those who are going through this, and we all do. And I'm glad that you bring this topic because especially if it is also connected to the family ties that we mentioned here. It's not easy. It's definitely not easy. Um, but we continue on with um, our questions here and Paul has, um, asked or question or mentions um, with increase of people living alone, either by choice or circumstances. Um, how are the teachings of family ties applied, notwithstanding that the person came from a family experience? Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, like, especially like in, in uh, modern places, right? Um, but uh, at the end of the day, um, the, this the setting changes, right? For example, today the, um, we still think that we need to be physically present in the same house over there, like ten people in the same house. So we bring this from many reincarnation that families need to be in the same house. Right, but as society changed, as we evolved, it's not the physical presence over there sharing the same bathroom, the same house, that will um, 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 that will um, define the family per se, right? Because sometimes we have that setting, and those individuals that live in the same house, they are more like enemies than family, right? So the sense of the family here is a setting where individual, and they don't say in the same, this is we, because our physical body uh, require that we cannot, we need to be in a place, right? Physically speaking. <laughs> so, but the question of the family that one day we're gonna reach is that uh, spiritual family, that the affinity is by sympathy, by respect and love as well. We don't need to be close physically you know, and, and to answer Paula's question is a choice. If you wanted to live by yourself, doesn't mean that you don't have family, right? You can live in the same neighborhood. You can live uh, in the same. So it's the affection you develop of those that either is connected to your broader tie or those that you make throughout your life that you call friends that, you know, become more family than <laughs> Then your broad, broadly family, right? So I guess it's not is is the idea of the family that we had that we need to be under the same household, physically speak, that will change as we evolve. But the institution of family will continue. It's gonna reach a time that we have just one big family, right? So the planet Earth is gonna be one big family. So that is the moment that we call the universal family. But until there, we need to work in our way in small family. And nowadays is under the same household. And tomorrow is gonna under the same city, the same neighborhood, and same city. And then we expand this. And one day we have one family for one country, another family for the other country. But this is gonna take you know many reincarnation ahead, right, Leo? That's a, that's a nice way to see it, Daniel. Right now, I mean, sometimes work, right? Work is your family work. You know, sometimes we spend more time at work than we we spend at home. <laughs> so there, you know, we got to include those as well. We work with, or you know, those we go to school with. So 
there are many types of families, not necessarily those that, you know, we call husband and wife or perhaps kids or perhaps, you know, the bloodly tie ones, as you mentioned. Daniel, we need to speed up a little bit here. There are amazing go, questions, yeah. but we need to be concise here with our, our, our answers. We're going to continue, you know, going from the top to bottom. Um, 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 Paula gives an example. I think this is an example to what you asked uh, before, Paula, saying, would Nielsen and uh, Devaldo be an example of transcendental union? Is the story in the book Renunciation an example of sacrificial union? Yeah, perfect. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that, you know, it, well, for those who does right. not know, then I'm just going to want to clarify real yeah. quick. Nielsen is the cousin of Devaldo Franco, who also, uh, while on this, you know, uh, reincarnated, was helping Devaldo with the dimension of the way, you know, all the works and, um, you know, was right there dedicating his life for the work that Devaldo, that we know that comes through Devaldo, right? The books, the help on the children, the families that they help, and also they worked really hard um, for to construct yeah. this together. And uh, we move on to, on a stereotype, stereotypical level, why is the Latin tem temperament prone to revenge? For example, all these jealousy based murders. I believe he, she was referring to the case that you brought, Daniel. Yes, yes. But uh, here's the thing. Yeah, in that case, the book happens in Brazil. Yeah, you're right. But here's the thing. Reincarnation will take care of this because those soul one day is going to be born in another part of the planet that mm -hmm. is not, they not have, they are not prone to revenge. They are prone to other things, right? So, and, and, and that is the, based on the culture that the soul is born, you know, and, and you, we acquire all this archetype as well from the cultural setting that they're living. Yeah, you're right, Paula. And each culture has their own, they are prone to their own thing. Others are prone to revenge, others are prone to wars, others are prone to, you know, um, prayer. You know, we have all kind of uh, setting that um, reincarnation will take care of that, right? Perfect. All right, moving on to Kirsten. Um... Question, is it possible to start out as an accidental union but become something good anyway? Everything is possible. Everything is possible. Why? Because the spirit has acquired one thing that is very important, is the free will, right? So based on that, everything is possible. Yeah, it's possible that there is an accidental union that later both of them, but both of them usually work together, right? So because in accidental union, if just one work and the other one doesn't work, it's going to be sacrificial. And then if it's based on in, in hidden agenda, it's not going to go, not, not going to go far, right? So I think it is possible. Everything is possible. Not, nothing set in stone, you know? And, 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 and that, that's, uh, that is something that we learn. You know, we are free to do whatever you want, right? Perfect, Daniel, thank you. And then Yasko, so uh, there is this case illustrated that exact those that we have some difficulties or even aversion are the ones that we should invest extra effort to love or at least accept reasonably. The knowledge of reincarnation is tough. Yeah, and I would say something more regards to that, Yasko, is that we cannot make any investment in other people if we don't invest in ourselves first, you know? Uh, so uh, here is the thing that people mistakenly a lot of relationship is that we want the other person to change. And we forget that we are the one that needs to change the way we see the other person. Because each one of us, we have our own journey. So the, the wife that I have today, the children that I have today, I'm responsible at that level, but at most I'm responsible for myself first. So if I don't do well with myself, I will sometime uh, compromise their journey, right? So I think uh, it's very important for us to always make an investment in better ourselves first. Because then, if we do that, those that surround us, we don't need to make a lot of efforts to change that. They are observing, you know, our partner will observe, wow, my husband's changed. So what is going on? Or vice versa. And then we're going to kind of like pay attention to the little things that we are doing and think we will 
somehow like come back to the tr come back to track. The big mistake we do it is that we expect more from the other part than from ourselves. And that's the huge mistake. And I'm saying this is not because I have mastered that. We all are in the same school here, right? But we are learning with the spirit's teaching that at first you are the one that you should be responsible for yourself first. You cannot help, you cannot give to others what you don't have yet, we, what we don't conquer with yet, right? So Thank you, Daniel. And then Yasko says, so this is... Um, I think um, we already put that. Oh, that's, yeah, I'm sorry, yes. And then Kirsten, um, when, uh, when or, excuse me, when or who mm -hmm. starts these issues that persist over many centuries? And do we know if that even makes a difference? Aren't we all somewhat guilty? Yeah. And the thing is that, uh, well, I mean, like, um, these cases um, that um, comes and history, for example, in general, needs to be told time to time because we need to have a reference from where we, are, we came from and where we're going to go and not repeat the same thing, you know, especially the, 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 the wrong decision we have uh, made um, uh, in the past life. Yeah, at some point, uh, Kirsten, you're right. So we should not be worried about many lifetimes. What the past is the past, but we need to be reminded. And that's what these books, that's why the, the, the teachers come. We need to be reminded, you know, look, look what happened. We need history needs to be told time to time. So for us to have a reference, sometimes people say like this, oh, we should not talk about slave. We should not talk about Holocaust. No, we should but not bring those as an excuse for us not to evolve, right? We should look, oh, we should not talk about the passion of the Christ. It's too much violence, it's too much. No, we should. In, but in the sense that that is like, look what we were and now what we are. So it's like, if we look at our lifetime, we can look at back in our teenager. We're never gonna say, oh, I don't want to remember how I was a teenager. No, we, we look at back and say, wow, Look at how much I have evolved. Oh, my my idea has changed, right? So there is certain thing that we need to be reminded, uh, but not be so much uh, leaving the past, right? And and I agree with that. We should not be worried about much the past, but we should have a references, a way for us to measure how much we have evolved, right? Looking at the past as you know, with, as a uh, a learning experience, right? To move on and to conquer, you know, greater grounds. Great, thank you, Daniel. And I, I'm gonna just pause here because I believe Abby was um, sharing as we were speaking when we were not sure if it was in the family ties or just in terms of you know on a personal level. This can be either with family or others. Uh, what does spiritism say when a situation may be so disrupted? Disrupted that we are looking for immediate help. We pray at the moment, we are looking for help and help doesn't come from our guides. So I, you know, I believe that we cover on that. And I think yeah. that it's interesting that you bring this question. Daniel, I, I think that we covered them all here. You know, what I will be actually putting over here is, you know, the thank yous that, you know, we have um, from Rosalda, from Abby, um, <clears throat> some comments as well that Kirsten brought, you know, in mm -hmm. terms of the domino effect, you know, mm -hmm. um, when we were speaking about many lives and all. Um, and then Paula says, very helpful update on the nature of family, heading towards one universal family. So it is true. And I thank you also, Daniel, you know, on, on a personal level, on a collective level as well, because as we were saying before, it's something that it's, you know, it's, it's difficult. It, it needs to be addressed. It needs to be talked about it. Um, and I think you, you, you said something extremely important. Uh, the, in terms of investment, right? Investing in others, but first of all, invest in ourselves as well. And and I, I dare to say again, not in a egotistical way, uh, but you know, as we are, you know, and this is actually following what we read at the beginning, you know, to be this example, to be this individual who is striving to become, in a silent way, uh, a greater person, right? A greater man or woman. Um, and, and we can do in our family settings, right? Mm -hmm. We can do, Paula, as well at work. We can do as well, you know, when we're among friends, right? Those that we're calling, you know, family and during this time, even though we don't have a um, blood tie family that are living with us. 
Yeah. So Daniel, and, thank and you we, again. Thank you. Lou. And <laughs> also, I mean, like, I know that for those, if you have the book Action Reaction, that book, this example that I brought is um, um, regards to a family that um, the, the, the partner didn't make, I mean, one of them decided to not to interrupt the agreement. But we have situation that is the opposite, that they, they, they have like debts that was, you know, mitigate debts. They have debts that were paid off and they have situation that they acquire, you know, they, they paid more than they, they supposed to. So there is, there is uh, different aims in the book. Uh, if you if you don't have the book, if you want me to send the chapter, I have the chapter I can send to you. Uh, one thing, Leo, in the end of the chapter, that um, Andrea Luis come to them and say, "Hey, but make the in, 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 make the um, uh, the um, stop the guy to kill the wife was not um, stop the free will of the person." Uh, so. And the, and the instructor answered something very interesting. Maybe this helped uh, to answer Ab's um, question. He said, look, is, is there, is a, there is times that, for example, if you have a disease in your body, if you have a tumor or a cancer, so you need to have intervention, right? And so basically, he's saying, I would like to finalize to say that if you experience something in your family that really is unbearable, and there is a need of intervention. So you are allowed to, right? Because one thing that you cannot do it is move on in a situation that will compromise not only your life, but the life of others, right? So I know that each case is, is very delicate, the separate is, but there is some a moment in our life that we need to make that strong decision, right? In order for us to um, at least try to you know, at least finalize this life with less uh, suffering as possible, right? But, you know, it's very hard for us to judge and to give any suggestion what to do it. Continue pray. Yes, I think even if you think, think that the, the prayer is not being answered, but doesn't mean that one day is not going to be answered, right? Very true, Daniel. Thank you for this closing. Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, help, you know. I'd like to say thank you for all of those who followed us and you know were here with us. Hopefully, those who will watch us in the future as well can, uh, 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 you know, can be this message can be encouraging and they can multiply it as well. On that note, Daniel, I'd like to just ask you to say the final prayer so we can bid ourselves yeah. farewell. Thank you. So thank you, dear Lord, for allowing us to spend this moment together, reflect upon the family our families, the universal family, and also for all these teachings that we have learned today, for the spirits that has um, been the subject of some example we brought here, we pray for them as well. And with your guidance, protection, permission, we close our study of tonight. May God bless all of us, and so be it. Thank you.